This is an MTTV Makeup News and Update. Makeup news from around the world. This is Makeup News. Hello all and welcome back to MPTV. I'm AJ and once again I'll be filling in for Sydney. I promise she'll be back again next week. But without further ado, this is your makeup news and highlights. The Handmaid's Tale is into its third season now and has been nominated for 11 Emmy Awards this year. According to The Hollywood Reporter, head of the makeup department Burton LeBlanc is responsible for all the looks that we see on the main actors. We see looks from distressed handmaids to women fighting for their lives in the toxic colonies. LeBlanc explained, it's a challenge to keep it real and raw and super emotional and not by distracted by makeup, especially with the camera so close up. LeBlanc broke down episode 9 of season 3 and explained how he used each makeup to develop their character throughout the series. In this episode, main character June is held in a hospital for a long period of time which results in her sanity suffering. In order to show this, LeBlanc said, June has been confined in the hospital for a very long time. While she's there, there's no sunlight and every day she's praying on her knees for hours on end. She's not allowed to do anything or go anywhere and it's taking a mental toll on her. Visually, I wanted her skin tone to be paler, with heavily red eyes and bruised knees. As each day and night passed while of Matthew grew closer to death, I had to show June looking much worse, always on the edge of completely losing it, but keeping it together as best as she could under the circumstances. He also said that he played off of the harsh hospital lighting and bright white walls to showcase June's makeup. In fact, he does this for all of the characters he works on. He knows what lighting will be used and what set they're shooting on ahead of time, so he can choose which colors and products would best fit for that scene. But as always, there are challenges that LeBlanc faces when doing makeup for Handmaid's Tale. He said, it's always a challenge to keep it real and raw and super emotional and not be distracted by makeup, especially when the camera is so close up in the scenes. My trick is to use the character's face and lines and natural shadows and accentuate them. Red eyes are very emotional, not only for showing crying, but rage, and June is feeling both from what she's been going through, and continues to go through in the moments of episode 9. I'm so proud of this episode. So we all love the miniseries Chernobyl, and I know we've talked about it a lot before, but we are finally getting an inside look on how makeup designer Daniel Parker created the iconic nuclear burn makeups from the series. He was nominated for his work on the series both prosthetic and non-prosthetic makeup, as he should be. According to Deadline, Parker put in three months of research on the tragic real-life events. Parker said that when you get down to the honest, real stuff, there are really no good photographs. So then I started reading, and I read and read, and I read about the process, the actual chemical process, what happens to the human body when it's exposed to that much radiation. From reading, I understood what happens to the human body, and then I started to develop the makeups and started doing tests. We saw different stages of radiation exposure and burns on the actors and Parker had to come up with ways to show the evolution and decay of their bodies through the use of prosthetics. Parker explained in a good deal of the initial exposures, there's a reddening of the face that you get and a modding of the skin and your lips and eyes start to swell. Everything starts to swell and that's what I refer to as stage one. But things become worse and depending on how much exposure you had to the radiation, the more severe the outcome would be. Parker referred to the next stage as the latency stage. In the latency stage, all the swelling goes down, the redness is still there. They're looking remarkably well, considering, and they're feeling much better. And they think, oh, that's it, great, no problem. That wasn't so bad. Then you hit what I call stage two, which is a massive swelling of the body and enormous amounts of pain because everything is starting to break down at a tremendous pace. The whole cellular structure of the body is starting to break down. The mucous membranes, of course, being the softer membranes, that's all going first. Then you start to lose your saliva glands. I mean, it's just horrendous beyond belief. And just when you think it can't get any worse, the final stage kicks in. Parker said, by which time your skin is completely falling off. Your skin is dying. This is why I've created the makeups the way they look, because everything's happening from underneath, as well as on top. Underneath, all your blood vessels are bursting and leaking everywhere. So everything is showing through your skin that's dying. And you can actually see the skin, which is the thing that I wanted to create, mixed in with the dying of the skin, the necrosis. 
To achieve the complex designs and paint jobs of Burns, Parker did something outside of the box to save some time on set. Parker explained the early stages were just paint, but actually it's very interesting because a lot of it was not painted. What I did was, I used a company called Tattooed Now, a tattoo company that makes tattoo for movies. I made very complicated transfers with veins and all kinds of bruising and stuff like that that are all linked together that I actually applied to the body first. This is the thing you don't do with silicone for human prosthetics. You just don't do it. Basically, I broke the golden rule by not putting enough treatment in the silicone and not painting enough on top. I'd say that's pretty much the most gruesome death anyone could endure and the way Parker's designs captivated the audience to believe so is something that will go down in makeup history. We love a makeup brand that gives you a pop and highlight and also gives back to the community. According to Hype Bay, Lauren Mercier will be doing that with her most recent launch. They are releasing a limited edition La Palette Naturelle face and cheek palette. The palette is made up of six powdered pigments, which include matte and shimmery blushes, bronzers, and highlighters. And the best part is that when you purchase this product, 100% of the proceeds go to Laura Mercier Ovarian Cancer Fund in honor of the National Ovarian Cancer Awareness Month. The palette will be dropping August 28th for $52. Building up confidence through makeup doesn't get much better when you're helping to save the others of who need it most. Humans unite to kill cancer through beauty. Everyone knows Rihanna's makeup brand Fenty Beauty, but not all are aware of the non-traditional process it took to bring the vision alive. According to Hollywood Reporter, James Vinson, Director of Education and the Artist Relations for The Makeup Show, is a beauty pro who was brought into work with Fenty in January of 2016. Vinson explained, They came to me with this new project that at the point wasn't named, and they asked if I would bring some of the products that were in development to pros and get some feedback. So we put together these roundtables with Emmy winners, Academy Award winners, bridal artists, influencers, and it really started from there. Rihanna is such a visionary, and one thing that people don't truly understand is she is involved in every decision, from color name to the choices of people who to work with. She's just very knowledgeable and very involved. And she wanted to find the diamond in the rough. Rihanna wanted to give makeup artists with not a large following or traditional resume the chance to be a part of Fenty. So they set out on a journey to find just the right employees. They interviewed over 2,800 artists from the US, UK, Australia, and the EU, which resulted in a great way to meet artists and expose them to a brand. Vincent said that the fact that we had all these auditions all over the country and she would watch videos of each interview, she would look at each portfolio herself. Watching the pieces that she was excited by excited me. I've noticed that same thing in my consulting with Pat McGrath as she is building her teams. It's about finding creativity. It's about finding people who want to connect with other people. It's about finding people's stories and stories that can be shared. That for me is what modern makeup brands need to do. Don't just recreate, don't just mimic it, but make something that has never been seen. Thank you so much for tuning into this week's episode of MPTV's Makeup News and Highlights. Until next week with Sydney, I'm AJ, and as always, respect the craft.